Chris from Pivot Cycles, and uh, I'm here with a couple guys from our, our both sales, marketing, and race team. So this is Patrick and Ryan and Taylor, and um, we're here today to talk about the new vault. And uh, we've kind of put these this group of guys together because all of us have been involved in the development of the new bike and all have quite varied experiences on what they do with the bike and how they ride it. And um, so we want to kind of get into it and talk about the bike and what each person's experience. And you know, Ryan, um, one, you're six foot five. And, this is uh, true. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, Ryan requested was that we build a bike for him. <laughs> And uh, most of our bikes come in an XL size that fix, fits Ryan, but, um, but not the previous version vault. And so in this one, with the new sizing and the new geometry, we were able to basically span the range and be able to get a bike that'll take riders down to about five foot tall and then um, six, five, six, six. So um, kind of tell us a little bit about the bike and what your experience on it's been so far and in the testing and everything. Well, I think for me, I mean, I, I'm kind of guess the resident roadie at Pivot, so I spend uh, a ma majority of my time on the road and kind of doing some gravel riding. So for me, I've really kind of been testing it out, uh, kind of doing some some road riding, commuting, uh, light gravel riding. So for me, that's that's kind of where my uh, my background kind of came in to kind of seeing how it would ride on the road compared to other bikes I've ridden in the past. How it would ride on the gravel, and you know, just kind of going through different prototype setups of you know, different technologies we're using on the bike. So I've found it more, uh, for me, a great on the road, you know, as a commuter, gravel bike, race bike. And it's been a, it's been a lot of fun being in the process of uh, prototyping this bike. Now you, uh, you've, you own a, a variety or have owned a variety of really high end tour level road equipment and basically asked you to kind of go away from almost a TT type setup and, um, <laughs> You guys will probably see some video of Ryan's <laughs> setup, which is uh, uh, what he's got going and for the rest of us in the world would still consider it a t almost a TT type setup, but it is quite relaxed for you. And uh, um, really compare, you know, one of the things we wanted to do with the bike was make a performance bike. It's an all conditions, gravel road, cyclocross bike, but performance is kind of first and foremost. And, being able to switch over, um, I ride mine a lot as just a, a general road bike with 28C or 30C tires on it with um, 22 millimeter or 21 millimeter inner wide rims. And, uh, and so comparing that to some of those pro tour level bikes that you've been on. Well, I think, I mean, by all means, this is, this is every bit, you know, a race oriented bike. So it has, you know, the acceleration, you know, of, you know, of what a, you know, tour level race bike would be. It's very responsive. It, it doesn't feel like a, you know, kind of a, you know, a slow responding bike accelerates very quickly when you put the pedal down, you know, it's, it tracks extremely well on high speed descents, you know, it feels very planted on the ground when you're, you know, when you're riding. So it's, you know, yes, the geometry might be a little bit different compared to, you know, what we would consider like a, you know, a road race bike, but performance wise, it has all the features and characteristics that you would see on a race level bike. And it doesn't disappoint. Like I don't, I never feel that I'm, you know, out riding, out riding the bike. The, the bike is absolutely amazing. Very stiff bottom bracket, you know, you know, very, you know, very responsive when you're, you know, kind of when you're, when you need to put the Watts down and it's, it's just a great bike. It's, it's been a lot of fun you know, getting to put, you know, a lot of time in the saddle and seeing how the, the bike has evolved during the, the development phase and how I've been able to test it and kind of try to really try to push the bike to its limits. And it's, I haven't found it yet. So that's, uh, that's always a good thing. It's always, uh, it's always fun to be on a, on a bike of, of this caliber and see the way it performs. And it, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a great riding bike and I'm enjoying it uh, thoroughly. Well, cool, because a couple of things we did on the bike to, to get that performance level. It's just like the previous vault, 386 Evo bottom bracket, that wide, large diameter bottom bracket when you see pictures of the bike, the close-ups of it. Um, really, the, the down tube almost rolls into the chain stays. And yes, as all current cutting-edge gravel bikes should have, 
huge tire clearance was on the kind of first and foremost on the menu, but comparing it to the previous generation vault, um, Taylor can talk about that a little bit as well because he's got a lot of miles on both bikes. We, geometry in like a medium size is not so different, but chainstay length we were actually able to shorten just a little bit and frame weight went, went, frame weight went down um, having more high modulus materials and we were able to actually add some vertical compliance but do some things in the chainstay area that actually made this bike more of a rocket ship. And so kind of you, you've, you've done some big, big, you know, 10 hour plus rides back to back, day after day on both bikes. And, and uh, so how does that translate for you? Yeah, coming from the old vault, I, I love that thing. So <clears throat> being on something that, like, like Ryan said, is stiffer in the BB area uh, with a 386, but compliant and it, it's just, you stated it being a, an adventure bike. Um, that's what that's what really appeals to me is you can set it up road gravel um, cyclocross anything like that so um, I think it caters to everyone out there um, especially with that that the shorter chain stays um, people are going to notice a big difference right away when they step on step on the cranks put the watts down a thing's going to shoot out of a corner um, I noticed it right away being on this thing even after eight plus hours of riding it's it's noticeable so on one of the earlier prototypes, when we first had you go out, I, I specifically asked, can you go out on some bumpy gravel roads and test the washboards on it? Because that was a big concern. Obviously, if we're going to shorten the chain stays, if we're going to make it more racy, um, you don't want it hopping around. It's got to perform that gravel duty um, well, even as a, as a race bike, there's, there reaches a point of too stiff. And, and uh, so you came back from that and thoroughly impressed yeah uh, the the thing with the gravel racing now is it's it's becoming so quick that you're needing to put down the watts everywhere out there um and so it's really important to be able to do that from the saddle um and so bikes that may not be as compliant you may be getting bounced up or bounced back whereas this one tracks forward and you can build speed on that um that was the thing that blew me away right away well cool and then Patrick, you're almost at the opposite end of the spectrum here. Uh, Patrick's running his bike. He rides a lot of mountain bike trails and just uh, explores and, and uh, dropper posts most of the time. I mean, I know you switch back and forth, but you run 650 wheels on it a good part of the time. It basically looks like a mountain bike with drop bars on it. Um, so how do you feel on, out there on the trail on the bike? Um, I feel like a recovering roadie um, in a <laughs> sense. Um, I, I, I love how um, gravel is kind of combining those two worlds of mountain and road and the vault is that ability to bring those two worlds together. Um, being able to do different wheel sizes and different tire combos, it really changes things up. You are able to tailor it to whatever ride you want and for whatever ride feel. So if I want to go do single track on um, South Mountain right here, I'll put the 27.5 wheels on it and have that huge volume to have that traction and comfort over rough terrain. Um, and then I have a dropper post in it as well, but with the Isoflex post, I'm not suffering as much from uh, having a, a rigid post um, or a dropper post there. Um, it's able to be compliant, keep the bike tracking on the ground, and um, just a lot of fun. Like it's everything that you guys have said already about the bike being fun and performance oriented on the road. It's just that way on single track as well. Um, but then I can also swap out those wheels and go do a long canal road as a uh, ride as well. And, um, I really enjoy that. I'm not as much of the racer anymore. Um, but I do enjoy finding new roads to go and explore. And I haven't found a limit on a setup on the vault that uh, doesn't make it fun or challenging, so. Yeah, it's really cool when you are on pavement and then the road ends, washboard or not. It's a, uh, there's, there's a ride I like to do up in Colorado Springs and uh, uh, you're, you're on pavement for a long time. You hit Gold Camp Road and it goes to dirt and on, on the full suspension mountain bike, it's so washboarded that it, uh, when, you, when I'm going to do mountain bike rides up in that area, it's, uh, um, it really slows you down and it bounces and, when we were doing the testing on the on the new vault, even and I'm just running normal 700 by 28 road tires on there. 
when you when you hit the washboards, it it just hammers through that stuff, um, and and actually more comfortable than on the suspension bike with fat tires and the way that actually gets hung up in the yeah. in the bumps. But the other thing you mentioned was the the isoflex, which we really haven't touched on yet, and that's a big part of the bike because when we design a race performance chassis on the bike and even though we've got vertical compliance built into it there reaches a point where if you build in too much vertical compliance it's going to affect other parts of the, the the frame and the chassis and you're basically going to get a bike that that's going to wind up a little bit and that's and that's not what we wanted actually we had a little bit of that with the with the old vault where it's a very comfortable bike but you definitely give up some of the snap and the acceleration um, to get that smooth ride out of it. Um, with this setup, when you're in the saddle, we wanted to basically do something rather unique that allows that isolation of the rider and the comfort level on long rides, but doesn't have to do it at expense of chassis performance on the bike. And when we were doing the the kind of the research on this bike and asking riders and, and dealers um, what they saw in their ultimate gravel bike, about probably 60% of them said, on the new vault, you need to do a 27 two seat post because that's more comfortable than a 31.6. And then uh, the rest of the dealers were like, it's gotta have dropper post compatibility. And if we can use a bigger diameter dropper, that's better too. Um, and so they're like, stay with the 31.6, you know, that's, that's good. And so we're getting these very mixed messages on how people want to use the bike. And uh, my experience with droppers on, on gravel bike as well has been, you know, any compliance that you had out of the seat post, um, a dropper post obviously takes 100% of that away. And so, yeah, you get the benefits of a dropper on a downhill, but you also get a beat down at the other points in the ride. And, um, so we came up with this idea of this isoflex. Um, it's patent pending, and it's basically an insert that the, the name says what it does. It, it isolates um, the seat post and the rider from the frame, and it, it puts some, some flex into the, into the seat post system. And it allowed us with the bike to have basically two setups. So we have one at 30.9 that'll run the same droppers we run in all our mountain bikes, and it isolates the seat post and basically allows the same amount of give that you would have if you were running a 27.2 on a, on a, on a normal bike, uh, a good high level, like our tuned flex 27.2 seat post design um, where you get some comfort out of it, but not too much. And then um, on the 27.2 side, we've got the same type of thing. You, you, you have the combination of 27.2 plus the isoflex insert. Um, and, and yeah, it's meant to take that edge off. And again, you put the most miles on the bike and, and, and the most off-road. So how is it, how's it working for you? It's, I think you guys hit it right on the head um, where it's, it doesn't give up anything with that comfort. So you're not giving away any performance on the bike. You're only gaining comfort. Um, and like I said, the bike just tracks when you're motoring from the saddle. Um, I think another really appealing thing to me about it is the ease at which you can swap from the 27 to, um, to the 30.9. It's within minutes, you can have that swapped out. You can run a dropper post, you can run a tw comfortable 27 two post. Um, and yeah, I, for me and my, my riding style, I'm always looking for more comfort, but it's a, it's a fine balance that you walk. It's a fine line of, it, it may be really comfortable, but it's also not efficient and, and you may be giving up time in places. And with the, with the Isoflex design, you're not giving up any time anywhere. And Ryan, you, I mean, we talked a lot about it from the road racing standpoint and some of the bikes that you've run with the super aero seat posts yeah. and stuff that are that just so rigid. You push back on the saddle, you're, you're putting all your watts down. Yeah. Um, and so you actually, we tested with you a uh, full aluminum insert, mm -hmm. no, no flex at all, <laughs> um, and then d durometers basically in, in degrees of 10 where mm -hmm. a 90 was basically like a skateboard wheel, almost no movement, and then on down to stuff that I tested that was so soft, it just bottomed when you mm -hmm. sit on it. Um, and, and, and we kind of balanced between all of our weights and a couple of other riders and weight ranges to find that, that feel that would work for a wide range of, of riders. 
And, uh, and so, yeah, you ran not dropper, but both 30.9 and 27.2. And so you, you have a unique perspective on how the differences feel on that. Yeah, and I think it's, it's an important thing. I really appreciated that, you know, kind of development in the process of it because, you know, trying the different C-post diameters with, you know, the softer, the different durometer rubbers, it, it really, you could see a difference in how each one performs. And it's always nice when, you know, I think when you're t having a new technology, you know, incorporated into a bike and you actually feel the benefits of it working, you know, it's not, I mean, it's something that, you know, the Isoflex is, is something that definitely works and it makes the ride quality of the bike even better. And that's what I really appreciated because, you know, coming from, you know, a road race background where, you know, obviously it's, you know, aero seat posts and, you know, bikes or the layup of the bikes are a lot different than, you know, gravel bikes. It, it was, you know, it was very fun to really kind of, you know, see that, hey, I can have a race worthy bike, you know, you can still see a little bit of comfort to it. So um, I really, after the whole testing process, I found that, you know, with the 27.2 C post and that uh, softer durometer rubber, it, it just, man, just makes the bike, the riding experience even better. And one of the best ways I can explain it is, you know, you, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of technologies that claim to, you know, make, you know, the ride, you know, more comfortable. And I feel a lot of times it on those, it, it takes away from, you know, the overall ride, the ride doesn't feel as well. With this technology, I think it just enhances the overall ride quality of the bike and makes the bike perform even better. So when I, you know, take it over, you know, real, real rough tarmac, like, I don't get bounced around like that. Uh, having that, you know, softer durometer and that seat post deflection, I can really kind of stay planted on the bike, and I can really, you know, you know, put the put the hammer down, and I accelerate forward, and I'm not getting, you know, kind of bucked off the bike or anything like that. So that's where where I really appreciate the technology is, you know, it's it's just it makes the ride quality of the bike even better. Yeah, and one of the pieces of feedback you gave me when you tested the 30.9 was that yes, it definitely. Uh, with a, the, just the diameter of the post, mm -hmm. even though the, the insert itself might move the same amount, the post itself doesn't. Yeah. And you definitely felt that more solid pushback. Yes. And uh, initially I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, you know, because you usually like these like three inch deep arrow seat posts, <laughs> um, that you're gonna be like, yeah, that's, you know, make it even more rigid for me. And after you <laughs> tested the, the spectrum, you were like, yeah, you know, I actually think I'm putting down well, you didn't think because you, you yeah. track it all yeah. um, that you're putting down equal or better wattage and yeah. and you're getting to your ride in more efficiently across the board. Exactly. And it, it's and that's been the, the nice, you know, throughout this whole process of, you know, seeing, you know, the development of this bike and being a part of it and, you know, giving feedback to Chris and, you know, our team kind of implementing ways to, you know, make that make that, you know, Isoflux even better. It, I just, it was such a, it was such an awesome experience because like I said, I've, I'm used to riding a lot of, a lot of raced out road bikes and, you know, a lot of times you're, you're sacrificing comfort for some performance and that's not the case with this bike. You're getting every bit the performance and the comfort's not coming at a, at a loss for anything. I think comfort is fast now. Yeah. yeah. With, with the, with the larger tire selection, larger volume tires with, with seat posts like this and the Isoflex comfort equals speed. Yeah, and I mean, even people on road tires are starting to, to see that yeah. wider road tire you can go faster on, you can go longer on. You know, beating, getting the shit beat out of yourself does not mean you're going fast. It just means it feels like you're going fast. Yeah. So. I actually found that the Isoflex had advantages off-road as well because of that built-in flex. Um, riding on single track, rough single track, whether it be washboard or mini um, rock garden, um, you're able to sit on the bike and keep your weight over the rear wheel and it tracks better and combined with the right tire setup and pressure setup, it actually is faster, smoother is faster, but, um, you're able to maintain that traction over rougher terrain. So you end up getting through those sections quicker with less fatigue and, um, greater speed. So overall, it's not just a comfort. And it's not just a performance, uh, it's also performance. Sorry, is that's what I was saying. So yeah, back to performance. Um, 
you guys are both power meter nuts and um, and that's kind of something unique on a gravel bike. Most people design a gravel bike and it's for gravel and you have to give up some things for that tire clearance. Um, and when you look at the new vault, uh, it's subtle, but the, the left chain stay is actually dropped a little bit further than the, the right chain stay. And that's, uh, that seems a little odd, but uh, it was because left arm based, power based crank meters or power meters um, are, uh, you know, they're on the, that left crank arm and it just so happens that it occupies the same space as the 27.5 size, size wheel. And so um, dropping that chain stay down um, allowed us to fit those power meters. So we clear, uh, you, you run in the stages and then Shimano also has their power meter and it's designed to clear both of those. And I'm sure others in the market that we haven't tested as well, because they all seem to have about the same, um, same offset uh, on the block there. And, uh, but that, I mean, you've told me on mountain bike stuff before, even before we started this bike, you won't, you won't even go on a training ride without your power meter. And so even get you to test stuff for us, yeah, that I mean, power, I mean, power meter somehow, meter some way has exactly. to bolt up. Yeah, absolutely. That's what, I, that's what I really respect about you, Chris, is you look, when, you, when you're designing a bike, you look at everything um, and, you're, and, and you make sure that everybody's taken care of on what they want to run personally on their bikes. And the vault is, is a perfect example of that with the clearance of not only stages, um, but all the other power meters on the market. Yeah, I know the term like Swiss Army knife of a bike is thrown around a lot when it comes to gravel, but um, but yeah, when we when we look at all the different users of this bike, we if we can check all the boxes, we want to check all the boxes. There there there's always some out, outskirt faction where is it you know a long travel or you know long distance touring bike. If you're at the racing end of the spectrum, yes, it can be, but it's it's not a touring bike first it's a it's a performance race bike and having you know power measurement and the the, the key companies that make that yeah there's you you can always find a pedal based power meter or a spindle based power meter but it seems right now that crank arm based power meters are the, the easiest to implement and they're winning yep so, absolutely um, so yeah so that's just another detail we got all the clearance, we've got the shorter chain stays. Um, and then the next thing that kind of falls into that area is gearing. And uh, everybody has a different idea of what they want to run. And so uh, in our own spec, we've got a one by build and a two by build, but because, I mean, you've got your bike set up, I believe with a full road race size. Yes, I do. What are you running, 3953? Uh, running a... A, a 52 was a 5236, but it's a, running a oval ring, so, okay, it'll, so grow, it, it'll it'll grow to <laughs> be a little bit bigger than a 53. <laughs> and you know that's also not typical yeah. of, a, of of a gravel bike. It's you, you kind of make choices, yeah. and so we clear full size road race rings. We clear compact, clear subcompact, mid compact, whatever you want to call the the range. Um, also one by gearing too. So uh, um, the 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 new vault in the um, in the SRAM build, the force build, um, has the new axis electronic stuff, um, and and that's a one by build. And then um, one of the cool things we wanted to do with this bike was um, kind of address both front shifting issues and kind of the the trend towards certain groups of people really really going for the one by setup and there's a couple of things going on in that when you have a round seat tube that's kind of the best most rigid front derailleur to be able to clamp a, a, a front derailleur on there that brings some compromises in frame stiffness it also with the clamp around the back of the seat tube that's very valuable tire clearance when you're talking about a big tire gravel bike and then, so that really uh, limits you to a um, uh, brazon type mount on the side of the seat tube. Most brazon mounts are riveted on. Um, those rivets and the size of those mounts um, flex a lot more and, and can compromise shifting, especially electronic shifting that can, can push stuff under load. Um, so we, we made it a, a rather large front derailleur mount. You, know, you look out on the bike on its own, and it's like it's pretty huge. And, uh, and it 
brings on, uh, I believe, more, a more rigid mount for shifting than you would have on a clamp on front derailleur. Things just aren't, aren't hung out there as much. It's, it's as good as it's ever gonna get on a road bike. Um, but then you wanna run one by and you got this big ugly thing hanging out there. And so we made that setup totally removable and uh, with a clean cover. And it's from an aesthetic standpoint, that's one of the things uh, I'm really stoked about and most proud of on the bike is that ability to like make it look, okay, yeah, this thing was built as a one by bike. And then when you go to shifting, you're running DI2 on yours. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you probably slam some shifts at times. Yeah, and you never have to worry about it going. Yeah, it, it, it never twists. Nope. It just, it just, it, it just goes. And, and you know, uh, one brand of electronic front shifting is a little smoother than the other brand. They both start with an S, so I won't pinpoint <laughs> one over the other. Um, but you know who you are. Um, <laughs> um, but this helps with, with, with that in either way, s s tends to, to, uh, to make for a much better front front shift on it so um chris i liked what you said about um the bike being a swiss army knife of bikes um when i look when you look at the bike and you even see things such as the, the fender mounts um with, tell us what your thoughts were taking that into consideration when you're designing the bike man i pushed back on that fender mount thing <laughs> you know here in arizona we're kind of allergic to <laughs> to rain and mud and it uh, and, and, and we don't see much of it. So it's, it's really a never fa a factor of the day it does rain is, is the one day you take off the bike. You don't really have to go out on those days. But um, particularly our friends up in Portland and in the UK, um, they're, you know, it's not a bike without fender mounts. And the two, you think racing bike and fender mounts, and it's almost can't say the two seriously in the yeah. same sentence. Um, but Again, looking at all the different people that were providing input on this bike, it was it was something we heard a lot about on the old vault, something that sometimes our competitors didn't pay attention to and something that was a big deal for certain markets. And uh, yeah, no, no, nobody likes that skunk stripe up the, their back when they when they get to the end of their ride, if they, especially if the end of their ride is arriving at work. Um, and in certain area, areas, if, if you're not riding when it's wet, you're not riding. Um, and so, yeah, so we wanted to do a clean way of doing that. And when you look at the mounts underneath the seat stays, they're flush, they're, they're basically invisible. Yeah, you don't, um, you can't even tell they're there. Um, and then on the inside of the dropouts, and then we include a bridge um, that goes across for the fender mount um, and extensions for the back to, so that um, really the most popular fender systems can, can go on the bike. And, and yeah, I mean, we, we had a wet winter here yeah. and, uh, and you got to, I did. and you compute, commute every single day, yeah. uh, rain or shine. And yeah. so you actually got to do some, yeah. some riding. And yeah, I got to actually put fenders on the bike and uh, test it out for the uh, handful of days. It, uh, actually, we did have a fairly wet winter by Arizona standards. So, you know, having the opportunity, you know, because normally I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm going to get wet. So I don't, don't need fenders. It is what it is. But you know, having the opportunity to really, you know, test the bike out with fenders, you know, see that there's, you know, we had plenty, I had plenty of tire clearance, you know, to still run, you know, wider tires with, uh, with the fenders on and, you know, really kind of see the benefits of, you know, having the fenders. It, it's a, it's a nice feature to have because it just adds to the versatility of the bike and the, the way we, you know, it can be installed. It's a very clean setup. You know, if you want to take, you know, the fenders off, you know, after a couple of days of probably, it's probably not going to rain more than a couple of days in a row in Arizona. <laughs> no, you, you can take them off and, you know, it, it, it looks clean. It's, it doesn't look like there's, you know, a lot of extra hardware that has to sit on the bike to keep the fenders there. So having the opportunity to test that out and, and really kind of see how the bike continues to perform with the fenders on, I think it just adds to the versatility of this bike and, you know, it's going to, you know, get more people uh, looking at the new vault. Yeah, and it's quick too. It's yeah. it's yeah. it's just a couple of minutes to pop yeah. those things on and Very off and, and have your bike back to in your case road race mode. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, Swiss Army knife, big versatility. We of course, spec wise, um, this bike is now really a gravel type setup, and uh, um, and you know that's where the hot part of the market is. That's kind of what 
spans the range. So, you know, wide inner width rims, the ability to run the big tires, and, and the new vault is spec'd closer, or not even closer, it's spec'd as a gravel bike. Um, but our cyclocross teams will continue to run it. Our, you know, every, we sell it as a frame set. It can, it can be sold any way you want. And then it has all the, the other nice boxes to check, the a top tube, uh, bag mount, plenty of water bottle cage mounts. Um, and then even for cyclocross, just the shape of the C-tube, top tube juncture, uh, our racers have said it's really easy to toss that on your shoulder and better than the old bike, which the old bike was really designed originally specifically for cyclocross. So, um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've got it all going on there. Um, you guys have anything else you want to pitch in on the bike? And Just thanks for making a bike for, yeah. for people like us three here that, that put it through all of its all of its tests and it, it checks every box. Well, thanks for helping develop it and your testing and thanks for listening to the tech talk on the new vault. So Wait, thanks guys. Go buy a new vault. <laughs>